I say reading Archie comics for 20 minutes is a good thing. I call it Archie therapy. As adults, I assume you have everything under control and have no need to get lost in the drama that once had you laughing. But if you want to recharge your batteries, yes, Archie Comics is still around. We even have our own app. My husband's passing. My interest was solely to bring Archie Comics into a third generation to honor the past family legacy of partnership. At that time, I was a art teacher in a public school in Paramus, New Jersey. That had been my career for 25 years. So what did I do? I stepped out of the classroom and into the boardroom. Fortune Magazine did a little article on me in December 2010. The title was Accidental Boss. The article focused on the fact that I had no business experience nor any formal business training. They were right. But I said, every CEO comes with a different slant. What was mine? Education. During my three years as a businesswoman, one of my internal struggles is with the repeated question of, what is it like to go from a teacher to a CEO? I am still a teacher. I highlight the fact that I am part of Riverdale High with my principal as Mr. Weatherby. I will not take my hat off. Why will I not do that? A deep secret was buried inside me a secret that would be problematic for my entrance into Archie Comics. I had never read a comic book. I had never read an Archie comic book. Why? Reading was not my thing. It just was not my thing. But how on earth was I going to contribute at Archie Comics knowing so little about my company? Don't reject yourself. Be confident became my mantra. And I made a mental note that I would bring home those comics every night and read them. As soon as I did that, I started finding myself showing up in our editor's office asking, when is Archie and Friends and Betty and Veronica coming out? As I waited for the new, I was reading everything. I started finding my favorites and rereading them. At one point, I didn't have enough to read. I started going to bookstores. I started looking at books. I started reading books. I found the love of reading. Our targeted market is the eight-year-old girl. How did these comic books pass me by? Where was I at eight? Well, I vividly remember. I was going into second grade. I even remember the dress I had chosen. I was walking to school with my mother and I was looking smart. I even remember polishing my white patent leather shoes the night before with Vaseline. After school that day, as I walked home, I was kicking the dirt on the side of the walkway. Those shoes no longer look smart, and I noted the dress, the beautiful dress I wore as a bad luck dress. What was going on? That morning, as I was to enter second grade, my mother stopped me at the kindergarten playground and announced, you're not going into second grade. You're going into first grade. You're going to repeat first grade. You have been left back because you cannot read. I say the remedy of retention stole the love of reading from me. I remember the remedial books they gave me, bending them, twisting them, folding them, shoving them into my little handbag that I carry daily to hide my shame. We know there's different learning styles, and a teacher must come equipped with a toolbox that is filled with what will ever embrace the skills of reading under a child's belt by grade three. With my first-hand experience and the many fans that echo that Archie Comics was their first reading experience, I promote that comic books is a powerful tool to bridge reading and spark the love of reading. I coined the phrase, comic books plus children equal confidence, reading, confidence, knowledge, and creativity. The students that come out of school today, we need creative thinkers to solve today's problems. Plato said, do not train a child to learn by force, but direct them to what harnesses their minds.
The Archie Comic Rainbow and my personal experience led me to start a program called Comic Book Fairs, where I placed comic books into the hands of children. I later expanded the spark to reading to intertwine information on social issues in an entertaining format that references topics such as refusing recycled plastic, obesity, mothers against drunken drivers, and what one can do when being bullied. Comic books are like a bowl full of candy and allow information on serious issues be presented in a format that is welcomed by children. The shoes that I wore as an art teacher still work for me. I am the businesswoman that defines that title as the mover and shaker for education. My passion for education is strong and pairing it with Archie Comics works. Although I was tagged as the accidental boss, I'd like to leave you with these thoughts. Can you imagine someone telling you what you can do, what you can't do, what you're not capable of? We all have dreams. Let your dreams be huge because they're your dreams and they're not for the taking. Nothing is easy. There will be roadblocks, but you will find ways to maneuver around them. How a woman like myself did not have a plan, did not have a vision, but only the passion to propel that Archie legacy. Surprisingly, the memories of the eight-year-old girl emerged, and from there I was connecting my dots that helped me discover not only the power of a comic book, but the power that I had in me to inspire others to unleash and connect with their personal self. I ask you to pass on these words to the young children that you come in contact with. Never let anyone define who they want you to be. You know who you are. Become active in your lives. Our children need mentors to help them discover interests, hobbies, and understand their learning style. I invite you all to embrace and harness the power of the visual image and comic books to be an academic resource for communicating with today's world. Thank you.